I asked you to play a little game with me this morning. I want to go through Dickie V's top 25 because when I Googled preseason top 25, the most recent one that came out was Dick Vitale's uh, top 25. Okay. So we're going to go through conference by conference for all the big conferences. And we are going to pick one team from each conference that we believe is overrated according to Dickie V's top 25 and one team from each conference that is underrated. Let's start with our most overrated teams in the country. The rules of this, this has to be a team that was listed in Dickie V's top 25. That may force our hand in some spots here. We may be picking teams we think are properly rated and calling them overrated. That's the game. Let's start in the ACC cart where the options here were essentially Duke, North Carolina, and Miami. Who is the most overrated team in the ACC? Uh, the most overrated team in the ACC to me is Miami. And I think that they did a good job of getting Nigel Pack back and getting uh, uh, Norchad back. But I don't think the loss of Isaiah Wong and also Jordan Miller can be um, replicated. I mean, Jordan Miller was one of the best glue guys in the country. I mean, he made extremely big plays during that tournament run. And then Isaiah Wong was doing everything for that team and putting him on his back at times. I think Nigel Pack has the ability to do that, but I don't think that you just lose those two players and you put them right back at 16. Like I just, I feel like that's just a little bit too, too high for me. Okay. I don't hate that. Um, I have a different answer here and it's Duke. It's Duke by default for me because I think that both North Carolina and Miami are just right in the range. They should be They're 15th and 16th, according to Dickie V's top 25. I wouldn't call that overrated at all. I wouldn't call it underrated. I just think like it's likely those two teams are top 25 teams in some form. The only team that could be overrated is the team that's ranked second in the country for Dickie. Yeah. And uh, I don't, I, I'm not saying I would rank Duke lower right now. So again, my hand is kind of forced here, but I think of those three, it's more likely Duke fails to meet that expectation than it is North Carolina and Miami are. And I do have concerns about Duke's youth, to be honest. We talked about it a little bit last week, but like, Filipowski's coming back from injury. Proctor is not a guy that I think is going to be an all American. Like most people seem to be banking on. Um, they're talented as shit. Don't get me wrong. Maybe the most talented team in the country, but we've seen really talented, like Duke freshman classes before not live up to being the best team in the country and be more like a top 10 team in the country. I think that's a very reasonable outcome. Moving to the big 10 where we only had two options from this list card, Michigan state and Purdue. Uh, my most overrated team is uh, Michigan State. Wow, that's big of you. Because I had to. So you're trusting Purdue. You're trusting the Boilers. Boiler up. I'm not saying that. You, I mean, you very easily could have picked Purdue as most overrated here. No, because if I did, I'd talk about them. <laughs> Violating your rule makes sense. Yeah, Michigan State is my answer as well. Um, I think I have Michigan State fifth in my current list right now. They're fourth on Dickie V's, so not far off whatsoever. But I, I've said it before, like Michigan State still has to make the jump. Everybody's penciling them in for it. They haven't made that jump yet. We think they're going to make that jump this year. But all everyone on this roster knows at the college level is 13 lost seasons. So uh, A.J. Hogart is really in shape. Maybe that changes everything. <laughs> we'll see. This freshman class is really good. But uh, if you got to pick one of those two to be over, it's Michigan State. Big 12, a lot of options here. This one, I feel like we can actually find one we both feel is truly under or truly overrated. Who is the most overrated team in the Big 12? I struggle with this one. I got a couple cross outs on this. And this, this pains <laughs> me to say, but I think Houston is a little bit overrated being at seven. I think they're going to be good. They added Cryer. That's huge. Um, and they got some dudes back. But it, at the same time, like you lose – you know, you lose Marcus Sasser, you lose a couple, you lose Tremont Mark as well. Uh, I do like the guys they had, don't get me wrong, like uh, Arsenal, I believe is his last name. Don't want to mispronounce that. Love his game. Still got Shed back. Um, yeah, I, but I just think it's a little bit too high based on the losses they had. That was my backup to the team that I'm about to go to. Um, I think Houston's more like a top 20-ish team than eighth. The pick I'm going with is Baylor, and Baylor on Dickie V's list is 21st. At 21, really? I don't think this Baylor team is going to sniff the top 25. I don't. Uh, listen, man, weren't they like 20th last year? 
Like they, this Baylor team was like supposed to be top five, top 10, but like last year in essence, they were, they were a top 20, 21 team, right? Like they were a five seed in the NCAA tournament. I think they lost to Creighton in the second round in a four or five game. It was a really entertaining game. No, maybe a six seed in the NCAA tournament. Three, six, I think. I um, maybe, I think. I think they were a six seed, which would have them 21 to 24 in the country last year. Then you lose Keontae George. You lose Adam Flagler. You lose LJ Cryer to an interconference rival and replace them with Ray J. Dennis. And Jay Nunn. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm sorry. And I know we, uh, we positively talked about those two a little bit yesterday, but like, I have big Ray J. Dennis concerns if he's supposed to be the best player on your team. And I think Baylor thinks he's the best player on this team. Jaden Nunn scored nine a game at VCU. That's not the Baylor guards we've seen the last couple of years. So uh, I think there's a big drop off coming. I think this team doesn't sniff a top 25 and is more like a bubble team. Like maybe makes the tournament, maybe not. I love Scott Drew. So I think he'll find a way to get through it, but I do not like this roster at all on paper. Wow. That's I, I I just can't agree with that one, but okay. I, wow. Big, I, I mean, we know how much you love Jalen Bridges, so that makes sense. He's a great first option guy, right? Moving That's on. Awesome. <laughs> Moving on. Big East. Uh, who's your most overrated team in the Big East? My most overrated team in the Big East is the Marquette Golden Eagles. <laughs> I I knew this one was coming for various for various reasons. Yes, they get Big East Player of the Year back in Tyler Kolick. Yes, they have Cam Jones. But Omax did a lot for that team. And I think a lot of guys are projecting that guys that play behind him take a jump. Um, obviously, they have um, Osa next to him, who's going to be who's going to have a really big year. But I don't know if other guys are going to make a step. I know guys have brought up like Ben Gold taking a step. I don't know if he's going to be the guy to do that. Uh, they, they lost a lot, I think. And I think they're glossing over the prosper loss a little bit too much. And also, uh, shop of smart fashion choices. Yeah, I knew you were going to pick that one. I don't hate it, but I think, like, I I, I just think Marquette's going to be really good in the regular season. They're probably going to fall apart in March again, but, um, like, they, they were so good in the regular season last year. They won the Big East. They won the Big East tournament that, like, they bring 85% of that team back. Like, I can't really imagine there's a drop-off there. Um, I'm going to team... Kind of like my Baylor one. I think this team could just be like totally out of the top 25 all season long. They're ranked 18th on Dickie V's list. It's Villanova, Cart. A lot of people love this Villanova offseason. Tyler Burton, TJ Bamba, Hakeem Hart are in. Lance Ware is in. Like, yeah, those are guys. That, that's a lot of names. A lot of guys who had good stats on bad teams pretty much. And then depending on how you feel about Hakeem Hart, I don't think Hakeem Hart's much of anything. A lot of people love him. But uh, I just don't trust this core. Like, I don't think Eric Dixon and Justin Moore as the face of your team means you're a good basketball team. <laughs> and, yeah. and, I, and who's the question over? Kyle Neptune. Okay. Just let that be known. Yeah, I'm scared. I'm very scared for them. SEC, who's the most overrated team in the SEC card? Uh, most overrated team at SEC uh, is who Dickie V has at number 10, Tennessee Volunteers. I feel like they're only there because of the Tennessee name. And yes, that might be a reason to put them there. Rick Barnes, obviously defensive mastermind, what they do with that team defensively. They lose Phillips. Um, I'm not the biggest Zakai Ziegler fan, to be honest with you. Um, I think that his story and what he does is great, but I think that it's a little bit like overhyped. Um, I don't think he's among the best point guards like in the country, like top five Koozie award winning level. Um, so I, I just think it's going to be a fall off with this team. Um, yeah. So I, I just think they're too high at 10. I agree. Um, are they the only 10 you see though? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. 10 in Tennessee. I mean, you, you had to, but I Jesus. was hanging over my head the whole time you talked about them. I'm going Texas A&M. They are, uh, 17th on Dickie V's list, which I get, like, I, I think that makes sense to rank them preseason there. They were really good last year. They won a bunch of SEC games really randomly. I still don't know how. Like, that's my big thing. I don't think this team on paper is very good. I don't think they should have been winning those SEC games last year. Like, and, and I do, they, they bring everybody back pretty much that matters. Like, Wade Taylor's back. Tyrese Radford's back. Julius Marble is probably their third best player. Uh, I still can't really fathom that Julius Marble is the third best player on a good team in the SEC playing well. So, 
Uh, I think there's a drop off here just because I Texas A&M might sort of like be expected to take a jump they're not capable of. I think they achieved to their ceiling last year and they won't achieve to that ceiling again, running it back with the same group. To the Pac-12, the final of our big conferences here. Only a few options here from the Pac-12. Arizona and USC were the two teams that were ranked in Dickie V's list. So who is the most overrated to you? Uh, the Colorado Buffaloes were at 24. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Respect, respect the bus. Respect Simpson. Respect Silva. Uh, for most overrated, I had USC at this spot. Um, a lot of this had to do with because I think Arizona is at a good spot. Honestly, Arizona might be, could be a little bit higher to me, to be honest with you. Um, USC, I think they're going to have the backcourt to be really good. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm buying stock in all Collier and Boogie Ellis throughout this year. Don't know if I'm buying stock in the other guys on the team necessarily. I mean, they added DJ Rodman, who was a good piece on a bad team. He was a good player on a bad team. Uh, Kobe Johnson could be like that leaky black type player for them. Um, but outside of that, I'm not really sure. Obviously, the things are up in the air with whether Bronny's going to play or not. So I, I just think at 20, I got to pick USC. And that's more so because I like Arizona at 12. Okay. I don't hate that. Um, I, I went Arizona here just between the two. I think USC is more likely to overachieve, which is why I went this route. I just think like there is a chance Isaiah Collier is just stupid good. And that's like a fringe top 10 team. Whereas Arizona to me, there's just always Caleb love potential on whatever team Caleb loves on. Like it might happen. <laughs> It might happen. I don't want it to happen because I love Tommy Lloyd and I love Arizona, but like there's absolutely a world where this team goes from top 25 to NIT and refusing to play in the NIT. We've seen it happen before. We I asked you to bring one from outside the power conferences. Who's the most overrated team in the country from outside the power conferences? This, this, one's, this one's easy for me. I haven't talked about it in a long time, but it's, it's good to be back. It's the Aztecs. All right. That run was great last year. Don't get me wrong. Okay, they lose Bradley, though. They bring back Butler, which is huge. I think Lamont Butler is going to have a really good senior season or last season for them. He's going to do some big things. His, he's going to get crazy numbers. But they lost a good amount around him as well. Like, I, um, even though I'm not as high on him, the loss of Keyshawn Johnson is going to be felt, I think. Um, so, yeah, I just – I think 19 is a little bit too high for them. For me, they're like – a fringe outside like they're like a team in the 30s to me not in the top 20 okay yeah i agree with you there there's just one other team i think is even more overrated did i miss them did i miss somebody it's gonzaga gonzaga is currently ninth on dickie v's list and uh yeah. i just i don't like the roster like drew timmy's gone Drew Timmy has been there everything for five years. He's not the only guy that's gone. Julian Strother's gone 15 game or 15 points a game last year. Uh, they basically got rid of Malachi Smith and Hunter Salas intending to bring in RJ Nemhard instead. But like, I don't think Nemhard works with Nolan Hickman. And now Hickman needs to play more minutes because they lost Smith and Bolton and Salas. So I just don't like, like if a team has Nolan Hickman as its second best player with no answer in the front court that you can trust other than Graham EK, who was good at Wyoming. Don't get me wrong. He was good at Wyoming. It's also Wyoming. Uh, I, like I, I just yeah. am scared. Can I, can I do a little chest tap on this one? Yeah, please. I did not see Gonzaga at nine. That's who I would have. Way too much, turn, just too much turnover and unknown with that program. Like when you lose a program, great. And then you also lose the supporting pieces around him who helped them be great. Like it's just too many, too much projecting with that team. Top, I think top 10 is nine is just a bit too high. I did not notice Gonzaga there. That's on me. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm glad we're on the same page. I, I think Gonzaga will be all right. Like I think they can still win that conference. And I just think it's more like 20 to 25 this year. So mm -hmm. of all those teams we just named, pick one, who's the most overrated team in the country to you, Cart? Hmm. Most overrated team in the country. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to get my camera sorted out here. No, well. you're good. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Uh, who's the most overrated team in the country? I think it's Tennessee for me. Wow, I, I don't think they should be. It's either Tennessee or Gonzaga. Okay. All right. Um, 
I don't hate that. I I'm gonna go Baylor. I'm sorry. I'm gonna go Baylor. Like I'm, I'm gonna call 21. my shot. I know, but I'm gonna call my shot. Like okay, it's it's the shot I called with Virginia a couple years ago. Like, are they a preseason top five team? No, but I said I think Virginia is gonna miss the tournament. Everyone called me crazy, and then they missed the tournament. I think this Baylor team is an NIT team. Wow. Okay. Not, I'm crazy. not proud to say that. I love Scott Drew. I love what Baylor normally is. I don't love Ray J. Dennis and Jalen Bridges. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs>